Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little here with the second part of the 13th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com where today we're going to be going over a hand from my opponent's point of view and I'll check out if I think he makes a good play or not. Uh, right here he opens to 150 with Ace-Queen suited. I would actually prefer raised about 125 here with my whole range. You, that'll allow you to raise a few more hands and also whenever you get 3-bet when you have the weaker hands you can easily fold. But, you know, making it 150 here is certainly not a leak whenever you're 60 big blinds deep, like he is. J Card Shark on the button raises. And if he knows anything about J Card Shark, he knows that J Card Shark's re-raising re -raising range preflop is going to be fairly tight. Let me actually pull up the program we used in the previous episode, and we'll sort of talk about my range. My 3-betting range here is going to be something like this. Aces through jacks, ace king, ace queen, suited, and that's it, really. I'm, I'm really not going to be bluffing in this situation at all. I'm going to be taking flops with all of these hands in the middle, sort of like king queen, um, ace jack offsuit, ace queen offsuit, pocket tens. I'm going to be calling here, and that's something that a lot of players don't do. They usually have a more strongish hand heavy three betting range, but what I don't like doing here is three betting tens and then getting jammed on and having to fold, and that's usually a pretty big disaster. So, uh, let, let's say that is J. Karshark's 3-betting range. How does Ace-Queen suitor do against that? Let's plug this in. You'll see that Ace-Queen has about 33% equity, which is not very good, um, to say the least. So, because of that, I don't really hate a fold here pre-flop from the ace-queen suited. And I know that may sound insane, but whenever your opponent is 3-betting so tightly, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be 3-betting these under-the-gun raises extraordinarily tightly, um, I think it's actually a pretty easy fold. Now, let's say you do decide to play this for sort of like the draw value of it. I don't really hate a call, but notice against my range, if the flop comes with an ace, I'm only going to put a lot of money in if I have, if I have ace-queen suited beat. If the flop comes with, say, a king, or let's say the flop comes with a queen, I'm going to have either ace-queen, aces, or king, so the only hand you can get me off of is ace-king and jacks. What you're going to end up running into is that you're going to be losing big pots to about half my range and winning small pots against the other half, and that's generally a bad play. So right here you have really large reverse implied odds. So I think this is actually a fold, and again, I think shoving would be very bad because uh, if I'm 3-betting only this very tight range, I'm going to be calling the shove with all of those hands. He likes to call, though, and gets a monster flop. Uh, uh, he gets a flush draw with a gut shot and overcard. So, I mean, it's like, what more could you ask for? And this is a cool board because some players that are through betting tight may actually bet, like, bet fold kings here, which would be a little bit silly, but some players would. J Card Shark's not, I can promise you that. <laughs> um, J Card Shark, uh, I'm sorry, Buckshot checks, which I think is good, and J Card Shark bets. And this is where I think Buckshot has to raise. And you want to raise here. Well, actually, you know what? I say he has to raise. I actually don't think he has to raise, because here, if J. Card Shark's range is this strong, let's put the board up here. Jack of clubs, nine of clubs, eight of spades. If J. Card Shark has this range, he's only going to be getting it in with jacks, kings, so he's going to fold out these hands if you check shove. And as you'll see, your ace queen suited is... Slightly worse than a coin flip, which isn't really that bad. Um, if you check call, you um, you get to see the turn, but I, I don't know. You know, the more I'm just thinking about this, I think you just have to check raise because you want to take, you want to be aggressive in this hand. And what Buckshot does is actually a little bit interesting. He check raises pretty small. And, you know, I'm becoming more and more of a fan of these raises, but in this spot, given how shallow he is compared to the pot, those are already 1,375 chips in the pot, I think he should just go ahead and shove. And it may look a little bit large, but if you can ever get J. Card Shark off of, you know, Ace, Ace, Queen, Ace, King, maybe even Pocket Queens, or if he happens to have a total bluff, like Ace-8 offsuit or something absurd that he decides to spaz out with, which, again, he's never going to do. Um, this, this, this check raise is pretty good. And I do think that's probably the play. If you have, if you know your, Jay Karshark's range is so tight to where he has just those monsters, you can check here on the turn, or check, the, or check call the flop, 
then check shove the turn and give yourself even more fold equity because then J Card Shark may find a fold with something like pocket queens if the turn's like a king. That being said, he probably just checked that back. So I don't know. I guess seeing the turn here will do nothing but really get you in trouble. So in this spot, I think I would just like a check shove. And I would do this in a buckshot spot if I had uh, probably eights or better. So pocket eights for a set, pocket nines for a set, pocket tens for a straight draw, pocket jacks for a set, queens, kings, aces, and then uh, these good draws. So if he did happen to have king, queen of clubs, ace, king of clubs, stuff like that. I think that would be fine. But I, I think Buckshot, seeing that he called preflop with ace-queen suited, he would probably just shove the aces, kings, queens, and ace-king suited type hands. So, unfortunately for him, this check raise is going to equal either a flush draw or a set a huge amount of the time, or something like ace-jack that he's just sort of butchering. And because of that, I think J. Card Shark's never really folding a made hand. And that is what happens. J. Card Shark decides to just put it all in, and uh, the flush draw does get there. So... Post-flop, I don't really hate the play, but pre-flop, I actually think this is going to be a tight but good and standard fold versus a player like Jay Karshark that's not goofing around versus early position raisers too much. So I guess that's the moral of the story. Don't get involved in tough spots post-flop because then you're praying for a great flop. And even then, Buckshot was only 40-something percent to win. Let's see how much he was to win in this spot. You'll see that he actually was a coin flip, so... His best case scenario, when all the money goes in, he's in a he's in a coin flip situation, and that is not what you want to happen. So that's gonna be it for the thirteenth week of weekly poker hand. If you haven't checked out my book, Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker, go out and get that. It will definitely teach you about these types of situations and how to avoid these spots where you have huge reverse implied odds that a lot of players get involved in on a pretty much daily basis in a tournament. So check that out. And if you guys would like me to go over one of your hands, please feel free to send it in. This has been Jonathan Little. Thanks for watching.